Salt, a substance so simple, so ordinary, and yet it has shaped human civilization and held deep spiritual significance for millennia. But salt isn't just a seasoning or a preservative. In the Bible, salt carries profound symbolic weight. It is a sign of divine covenant, a means of purification, and a potent spiritual weapon. Today, we dive into the hidden layers of meaning behind salt, uncovering why it is so often mentioned in scripture and how it plays a crucial role in spiritual warfare. Everything God creates has purpose. Fire was given authority to consume, water to give life, and salt to purify, preserve, and season. Yet, of all the elements, why did Jesus call us the salt of the earth? There's a reason salt is tied to spiritual symbolism, and today we'll explore its role in preserving our faith, in breaking curses, and in reflecting God's authority in both the physical and spiritual realms. At the dawn of creation, when God formed the heavens and the earth, salt was among the minerals birthed from the depths of the earth. Even from its origin, salt carried more than just physical properties. It was designed by God with spiritual implications. Salt was created to have authority to preserve what is good, purify what is impure, and bring balance to creation. But the role of salt is more than just a physical function. It has a deeper spiritual essence. Salt is a symbol of faith that remains steadfast in the face of trials. In the same way salt preserves food from decay, it symbolizes our spiritual endurance. This is why Jesus used salt to describe the role of his disciples to maintain the integrity of truth in a world decaying with corruption. This divine purpose of salt is intricately woven into the fabric of scripture. Salt's presence is felt in offerings, covenants, and even in divine judgments. Yet, many of us overlook its spiritual value, unaware of the power it holds when used with faith and reverence. In the ancient world, salt was not just a commodity, it was a cornerstone of civilization. It preserved meat, seasoned food, and even acted as currency in many cultures. The Roman Empire paid its soldiers in salt, giving rise to the word salary. This shows the immense value that was placed on this mineral. But beyond its material use, salt was recognized for its spiritual significance. In Christian rituals, we readily accept the use of oil, bread, and wine. Yet, salt, despite its numerous mentions in the Bible, often goes unappreciated. Why is that? Perhaps it's because salt has been wrongly associated with evil practices. Some believe salt is used primarily in dark rituals, but this is a distortion of its true purpose. John 10.10 reminds us that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The enemy seeks to corrupt what God has made holy, turning people away from the truth about salt's spiritual significance. But scripture shows us that salt was always intended for good. From ancient times, it was recognized as a powerful element, both in the physical and spiritual realms. Its presence in covenants, purification rites, and divine instructions is undeniable. Understanding the biblical context of salt helps us reclaim its true purpose as a weapon in spiritual warfare. The Bible is filled with examples of salt being used for more than just flavoring food. In Leviticus, God commanded the Israelites to season all their grain offerings with salt. This wasn't just a matter of taste, it was a spiritual command. Salt was a symbol of the covenant between God and His people. It purified the offerings, symbolizing the removal of impurities and the preservation of holiness. Consider the story of Lot's wife. When she disobeyed God and looked back at the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, she was turned into a pillar of salt. This was no random punishment. Salt was used as a tool of divine judgment, a permanent marker of disobedience. This incident shows the dual nature of salt. It can both bless and curse, purify and preserve, or mark judgment upon sin. Another significant reference is the covenant of salt found in the Old Testament. 
In 2 Chronicles, God establishes a perpetual covenant with David, symbolized by salt. This covenant was an everlasting promise, signifying loyalty and faithfulness. The use of salt in covenants wasn't just symbolic. It was a tangible expression of a spiritual truth. God's promises endure forever. Salt's significance doesn't end there. It was used in various purification rites and sacrificial offerings, showing that it was seen as essential to maintaining spiritual purity. Salt represented God's holiness, His unchanging nature, and His desire for His people to remain pure and faithful. While salt was given by God as a tool for good, the enemy has always sought to corrupt what is holy. Sorcerers and those involved in witchcraft have long recognized the spiritual power of salt. They understand that salt holds authority in the spiritual realm, and they attempt to twist that authority for evil purposes. But just because something is misused doesn't mean it loses its original purpose. The truth is that salt remains a powerful weapon in spiritual warfare, especially when consecrated and used in faith. When used according to God's will, salt can break curses, drive away evil spirits, and purify environments tainted by sin. The key lies in understanding that the power of salt is not in the element itself, but in the authority given by God to those who use it with pure hearts and sincere faith. Unfortunately, many Christians have abandoned the use of salt in spiritual matters because they've been deceived into thinking it's irrelevant or even dangerous. But reclaiming the biblical understanding of salt allows us to wield this tool with the authority that God intended. We can use salt to break spiritual strongholds, purify our homes, and reclaim territories for God's kingdom. Throughout the Bible, we see prophets using salt in acts that carry deep spiritual meaning. One of the most powerful examples is found in the story of Elisha. The people of Jericho were suffering because their water source was contaminated, causing death and barrenness in the land. Elisha, instructed by God, threw salt into the source of the waters and declared, This is what the Lord says, I have purified these waters, there shall no longer be death or barrenness. This was more than just a symbolic gesture. It was a demonstration of God's authority over both the natural and spiritual realms, using salt as the instrument. The act of purifying the water was not only a physical healing, but also a spiritual statement. God's power can cleanse what is unclean and restore what is broken. In our own lives, we can engage in similar prophetic acts by consecrating salt and using it in prayer and spiritual warfare. Whether it's purifying a home, breaking generational curses, or dedicating an offering, the use of salt, when done with faith and reverence, can manifest God's power in tangible ways. The act of spreading salt in places where evil spirits have taken hold, accompanied by prayer, serves as a declaration that those places now belong to God. The concept of the covenant of salt is deeply rooted in Eastern traditions, where it symbolizes mutual loyalty and trust. When two parties share a meal seasoned with salt, they are making a binding agreement that neither will betray the other. This practice has persisted for thousands of years and illustrates the enduring nature of salt as a symbol of faithfulness and covenant. In the Bible, the covenant of salt is a reflection of God's unbreakable promises to His people. When God made a covenant with the Israelites, salt was included to signify its perpetual nature. This covenant was not only a commitment from God to His people, but also a call for them to remain faithful in their relationship with Him. Even today, the principles of the covenant of salt are relevant. It reminds us that our relationship with God is not something to be taken lightly. It is a bond sealed with the enduring symbol of salt, representing purity, loyalty, and eternal commitment. As believers, we are called to uphold our end of this covenant by living lives that reflect God's holiness and righteousness. Salt is more than just a mineral. It is a profound spiritual symbol. 
a weapon in the hands of God's people, and a reminder of our covenant with him. But like any tool, its effectiveness depends on how it is used. The power of salt lies not in its physical properties, but in the faith, obedience, and reverence with which it is handled. To apply this truth in our lives, we must first consecrate the salt we intend to use, dedicating it solely to God's purposes. Whether it's for breaking curses, purifying offerings, or protecting our homes, we must approach these acts with a heart of faith and humility. Salt should never be used frivolously or without understanding its spiritual significance. When used correctly, it becomes a powerful instrument, bringing blessings, breaking strongholds, and affirming God's authority in every area of our lives. Salt is not to be worshipped or idolized, but neither should it be dismissed. It was created with a divine purpose, and when used in accordance with God's will, it carries the power to transform and sanctify. Let us reclaim this powerful tool and use it as God intended, faithfully, reverently, and purposefully. Salt is woven throughout the fabric of Scripture, symbolizing much more than we often realize. It represents God's enduring covenant with His people, His purifying power, and His justice. It is both a blessing and a warning, showing us that what is holy should be treated with reverence. As believers, we are called to understand and reclaim the spiritual tools that God has given us. Salt, when consecrated and used with faith, is more than just a substance. It becomes an instrument of spiritual warfare, a seal of divine promises, and a sign of our commitment to God. But let's remember that salt is not a magic formula or a ritualistic crutch. Its power lies not in superstition, but in obedience to God's will and alignment with His purpose. As we walk in faith, let us seek to use salt as God intended with reverence, with understanding, and with the authority granted to us as His children. Whether it's purifying our homes, breaking strongholds, or sealing a covenant, salt reminds us of our role as preservers of truth in a world that often loses its flavor. If this teaching has stirred something in your spirit, take action. Reflect on how you can bring the spiritual significance of salt into your life and faith practices. Your thoughts, experiences, and questions are valuable, so share them in the comments below. And if this content resonated with you, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Together we can explore these deep truths and grow stronger in our understanding of God's Word. Thank you for being here, and may God's blessings surround you always.